what it's about. Hey guys, we're here having some fun setting valves tonight. So I have no idea what that means. Andy's going to tell me. We messed around with this before. Now we got a better location, better lighting. Yeah, better, better stuff to work on, easier location here. So a lot of guys come into my shop and they're afraid to set valves. They want to build a motor and they're not quite sure how to set the valves. And a, lot, a lot of guys know how to do it, but a lot of guys don't. They don't want a solid cam or a hydraulic cam. So we're going to tell you the difference between a solid and hydraulic. We're going to give you some advantages of one to the other. We're going to show you how to set your valves. I mean, if you're building a new motor, you got to know how to set the valves. If you're racing a motor with a big cam in it, you got to know how to set your valves to maintain your valve train. So something in every hot rodder should know how to do it. We're going to show you how right here. Okay, small block Chevy. This is a 414 cubic inch small block Chevy. We just got done beating the crap out of it. it made 612 horsepower. Yeah. We're just going to run the valve, make sure everything's 100% before we get back to the customer. 612. That's that's a good amount. Yeah, pump gas. You know, like it's, it's, it's an old it's an old top hat. The guy had his heads. He had an old TNG intake. He has too big of a carburetor. It's not a great combination, but I mean 612 horsepower, 414 cubes on pump gas. Not too shabby, man. So let's get it apart. Start setting valves, dude. All right, let's do it. Yeah, T handles on here. Make sure you put the parts in order. I'm not sure where they all go, dude. Okay. <laughs> Don't mess that shit up. <laughs> all right, we're just pulling these guys right off, right? Yeah, wheel right off. All right, so Andy is giving me the essentials, right? This is the guide to things that you need to know. The basic stuff gun. that you need to know that we really can't show you here. If, if you don't have a small block Chevy, you are actually, you know what, this firing order and, and orientation works for any small or big block Chevy and any Chrysler. Fords, those guys do weird stuff, man, so you got to figure it out on your own, but any motor's manual or tilt manual will tell you your orientation. What's, and what orientation mean is which piston is where. On a Chevrolet, it's one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, and eight. So on a Ford, it's a little different than that. I, I believe a Ford is one, two, three, four, and it's five, six, seven, eight, and on this side here. So you have to know the orientation. What else? Firing order. Firing order. Dude, this guy's sharp, man. I told I him, like, like, what, 13, 14 times we went over this, and you already got it. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. Firing mm -hmm. order. You got a, a small block Chevrolet or small block, big block Chrysler, any Chevrolet. You know, they're all the same firing order, unless you got something really racy they mix them up. Small so. block and big block the same? Small block Chevrolet, big block Chevrolet, the same firing order, and so are small and big block Chrysler, the same as Chevrolet. I did you not know that. Yeah, pretty much any GM V8 or Chrysler V8 has the same firing order from the, from the factory. Okay. Some of the hardcore race guys are juggling firearms around now and trying to make a little more power. Um, so that, that's kind of heavy duty stuff there. So for now, we're going to stick with our standard firing order. Small block Chevrolet is one, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, and two. So we got we know our orientation, we know our yeah. firing order. What else do we have to know? I, I'm even getting confused now. What else do we have to know? We have to know. We have to be able to identify which valve is which, right? Which valve intake, yeah. exhaust. Yep, yeah. you gotta pick a cylinder and normally start with number one hole. So rotate the motor around to or get a good look at number one cylinder here, and you gotta you gotta identify your valves. So Dave, which valve here is an intake and which valve here is an exhaust? Well, I'm gonna say your exhaust is the guy in the front because I can see the header. How about that? I'd have to tell him that. He, he got it. He got Bam. it. Man. I did get that wrong the first time <laughs> yeah. because I didn't see the header. I was yeah. not looking at the yeah, exhaust. It's, it's, he had a 50-50 shot. He could have got it wrong this time. Too. <laughs> I learned. <laughs> I learned too well. I'm a fast learner. All right. So we know which valve is which now. And that's a good way to tell. Your exhaust valve is always lined up with your exhaust port on your shoulder head, as is your intake valve on your intake port on your shoulder head. So now we know which valve, which, which valve is which. We know our orientation. We know our firing order. Mm -hmm. Last thing you have to know is what kind of camshaft you have. Solid or solid hydraulic. Solid or hydraulic. You know, and so a solid lifter will have, have a given amount of lash. A hydraulic has a given amount of preload. And preload means you take all the slop out of the valve train. Hear that guy ticking right there? Take all the slop out of that and then you compress the little hydraulic cylinder in the lifter. It's like a little hydraulic cylinder. And it okay. compresses a little ways and it keeps all the slop out so they're nice and quiet. When you're trolling around town, you don't hear that lifter tick like that. So they, when, when, all, when all eight of them are ticking, you get a little bit of rally noise out of it, you know. So guys like hydraulics for that reason. Solids make more power. I'm a solid guy myself, you know, because a solid roller or solid camshaft, you can put more spring to it because a hydraulic cylinder can only take so much. That's my next question. So then what, what's the difference? Because I, I hear that term a lot, roller cams. Roller cams. And, and, and is the valve setting different on a roller than a non-roller? A valve setting is going to be different for pretty much every application. I mean, any any engine, any cam, I mean, there's there's... Rollers and hydraulics and, and solids and flat tappets that have 
valve settings all over the map. You got to know what you have. You got to know okay. who buys shit. You got to know how much preloader lash it has. The, you know, that's designed in a camshaft to tap it in a rocker arm. So that, 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 there's no set number for anything. You have to know that stuff. You know, I mean, when you're, when you're buying parts or, or you have an engine, the, the, the chunk manager will tell you if you have a stock engine or the manufacturer is going to tell you that, you know, okay. uh, if you have, if you're buying new racing stuff. So let me show you the difference between a roller and a flat tappet dog. Hang okay. on. All right. You asked me what, what the difference between a solid and a flat tappet is, or I'm sorry, a roller. A roller. Yeah, a roller. That's a roller cam. Well, that's a roller tap it, and that's a flat tap it. Okay. On a, on a flat tap it application, the, the lifter just kind of slides on the camshaft, like so. Got a good bit of friction, but it's 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 not really a big deal because the roller actually the lifter actually spins, like so, and because it rolls off center yeah. on the camshaft, so it actually spins. So no, it's, it's kind of like a wheel, not a whole ton of friction, but it only takes okay. so much pressure, and you can only, you only open the valve so fast because. If, went, if the ramp gets aggressive, the edge of the tap will dig into the edge of the edge And of the it's edge. still sliding across the metal as opposed to rolling. Yeah, roller, it's, just got a, it's got a wheel with a roller bearing, or some of the better stuff has actually a bronze bushing in it now. And uh, the rollers roll on, on, the, on the lobes, and they're able to open the valves a lot quicker. And okay. less, less friction, less, less chance of scuffing the lobe off, you know, mm -hmm. that about. So roller cams are, I mean, heck, everything from probably late 80s till now yeah. is a roller cam. Even stock stuff is a roller cam. And, Pretty much whenever I can talk a guy into it, I'll talk him into a solid roar cam. Do they make more power, less trouble? I mean, just the okay. way they We got a lot of the basic stuff down now. <laughs> we know the firing order, we know the orientation. We know this is a solid roar camshaft because, well, we're not pussies and neither is this guy. So we got a solid roller in this thing. And we know which valve is which. So now we have all the simple stuff figured out. I'm going to tell you guys the procedure I use here for setting valves. Some guys might not say it's the right way. I say it's the right way and my shit goes pretty fast and doesn't blow up, so we're gonna do it this way. We do it all the time like that, so fair enough. How I set my valves is I'll single out a cylinder and I'll bump the engine over until the exhaust valve just starts to open. And when that exhaust valve just starts to open, that means the adjacent lobe, the intake, is on the heel of the lobe, the back spot of the lobe, the flat part where the valve yep. not open. At that point, I'll set my intake valve, right? And after I set the intake valve, this is where the other information comes in. Once you get one intake valve set, let's bump the motor over here. And we'll just show you how it all works. All right, so is it always intake first? It doesn't really matter. You can okay. do the intake valve first, you can do the exhaust valve first. You set your intake valve when your exhaust valve is just starting to open, and you set your exhaust valve when your intake valve is almost all the way back closed. So I'll, I'll pick out number one hole, I'll start bumping around. Whatever valve is doing its thing first, that's where I'll go. So this, this, this exhaust valve is, is pretty far open right now, so I know it's too far gone. Yeah. It's not just open, so. No, that's fine. I just felt bad for the guy that's watching and just did his exhaust valve first, but now he knows he didn't make a mistake. It's not any difference, no. So we're gonna bump it over. The exhaust valve's coming closed. The intake valve is coming down. And you see the intake's at max lift right now. Keep bumping it till it's almost all the way closed. It's still tight, it's a little shorter. The, the spring's crushed a little more than the exhaust is. The exhaust is looped, so we know our intake valve is almost closed now, it's on its way. That's where you're going to set your exhaust valve. We're going to set our valve at 18 thousandths. That's what the cam card calls for. We set them a couple thousandths tighter than that when it was cold. When it gets hot, the head grows a little bit and you gain some clearance. So we're going to check it here. And that feels pretty much perfect to me. And that's why we buy Jessel rockers. These things are the best in the business. You know, good heads, good rockers, they're assembled right. We put a half a dozen pulls on this thing, beat the crap out of it. Everything is still perfect. So. What I would do at this point is, rather than keep looking at number one and setting the intake valve, we're going to use the other information we gave, we're going to follow our firing order. So once you set your number one valve, either be intake or exhaust, you know every quarter turn, every 90 degrees, the next one in the firing order is going to be ready. We already set number one exhaust valve, we're going to set number eight next, because our firing order is one eight four three six five seven two. so one eight. And I know in a quarter turn, this intake valve is in the right spot, 90 degrees, that one's in the right spot. Just bump it a wee bit here. It's almost closed, right? There you have it. I'm gonna let you tell me where to stop. All right. See how that feels in that exhaust, in that exhaust valve. The exhaust valve? Yeah, come on, we're setting exhaust valves first, Dave. This is this one's too tight. Let me come around and take a oh, look no, at it. Oh, no, there we go. That's perfect. It's got a lot of spring pressure. I mean, a snug feels yeah, kind of what you want. It's it's nice and snug. It goes, it goes under. You gotta follow the wheel down. Yeah. There you go. Yep. That's good. I hope we get one that's kind of messed up here so we can reset it. This one's a little more snug than that one. That, that was as tight as I would want it, so we're going to reset that then. Okay, so right. I would say it's a hair. I mean, a very, very, very... All right. So we got, we got all kinds of stuff we learned here. Now, we learned, 
we got to have the firing order. We're not going to our orientation. We got to, we, we, we not identify which valve is which. Now we got to set the valve. We got to adjust the mechanism that, that, that sets the last in the valve. There's two different kinds. This is a shaft mount rocker. It's got a little adjuster nut and jam nut back here on the push rod. Far and away the best type of rockers there are. They do make some stud mount rockers like this thing here, which is more common in the older cars. These things work pretty good. It's a similar deal, except for you have a, you have a set screw and an adjuster on the top of this deal here, and that's, that's, that that lowers and, and, and raises your rocker arm on the okay. stud, and that, that's how you set your lash. So you're not adjusting your your push rod cup, you're adjusting your actual fulcrum up and down. Same principle, it works just as well. Not quite as steady as these are, but your rockers may not look like this in your car. So yeah, for example, we're gonna loosen up this, this is it the Allen wrench at the top here, the Allen bolt right, at the top? Right. And when we loosen that, then how do we adjust the, well, where the valve is set? This, the, the, the Allen wrench goes in the cup on the end there. Yep. And that's, that is your actual adjustment. If that's you, the actual adjustment. If you adjustment. back it up, you're gonna gain lash. Okay. The, the, the big nut is your lash. That, that, that's your jammer. That, that just kind of holds everything still. That just holds it wherever we right. set it. So what I do is I kind of keep track of where my Allen wrench is at, right? And you want to back it up just a tiny bit. Okay. See, see, see the angle that's on? Yeah. So hold the Allen wrench still, all right? And, and crack, it's gonna be snug. Crack that jam nut loose. There you go. Oh, I got it. Now just slide the Allen wrench down just a tiny bit. Just there you go. Bit. Yep, like and right re-jam that bit. And then I think we're good. I think I, the iron has moved down quite a bit there. Yeah, good, that's good. That's yep. good. All right. And now, how snug when we when we tighten these guys back up? You want that as tight as it was when you loosened it. You know. Okay. Let me feel. Too tight, you can break the rocker back in the rocker arm. Not tied up, it's going to come loose again. Right. That's pretty good. Right? Just double check our right. knife now. We removed it. Because sometimes you can turn this, it turns the nut, it turns the Allen inside of it. Oh, and I think it did. Yeah. 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 Just back it up, get a little more out of it. Yeah, so this isn't a difficult thing, but it's a it's, little it's, tedious. It's tedious, it's time consuming. Yeah, and, and I can run valves on a motor in 10 minutes with ease. You know, in my race car, every week we go onto the track, Tiffany takes the valve okay. covers off, we let it sit and breathe for a day, get the alcohol dry out. <clears> I run the valves and check the springs in 10 minutes, so it takes a few seconds. Yep. All right, one, eight, four, three, six, five, and seven. I have two to do on my side now. Oh man, my back's gonna get sore, it's a lot of work. Yep. That intake valve is almost shut. Yeah, see that's a little tight there. So here's what I'll do. I'll leave the Allen wrench and the wrench hang right on it. Like so, kind of watch my wrench. Back it down a little bit. Double check my tightness, we're good there. Seven's perfect. So we got one more to do on our Delta exhaust valves. Two. What? I know, I forgot that we didn't do two yet. All right. Oh, it's perfect. Good? Yeah. All right. Okay, now we're gonna set, we're gonna do the same thing for the other valve. We got all our exhaust valves set. We're gonna take a look at our number one cylinder again. We're gonna bump it over until the exhaust valve just starts to move. And then we'll set our intake valve. So you set it, same you, order? Same firing order, yep. Same, yep. yep. So, <clears throat> so when the exhaust valve just starts to open a wee bit, that's where we're gonna set our intake. So it's, it's a little easier to watch that because it's just as soon as it moves, you know you're ready to go. The intake, you gotta kind of judge how far closed it is. <laughs> There we are, it just started to move. Let's run valves, man. I'm good there. Eight's next, right? Yep. You can, you have, the, you have your valve tip, which is flat, and your roller wheel, and they come together. It's almost like a wedge, so it's easy to drive something in there and pop that valve open a wee bit. So when it's too tight, you can actually push the valve open a tiny bit with the feeler gauge. <laughs> Boom, as soon as that valve starts to move, I check the intake. A little snug. Perfect. 18436. Third one back on your side, dude. We're blowing through these things now. Then we get an ice cream stand along the track, along, yeah. along the road. Like, you know, get an ice cream cone and set your valves when you come by. Yeah, Vinny's valve setting. Vinny's valve setting. <laughs> I'm setting up next to the trailer at the next race, so if anybody needs anything done, right. come on down to Vinny's valve setting. Free spring. Well, what, what am I charging? I'm charging probably two bucks a cylinder. Two bucks a hole, yeah. That's yeah. how I'm doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You roll it in. Two bucks a valve. Two bucks a valve. Yeah. yeah. You're getting greedy, dude. Come on. Yeah. yeah. All right, a dollar a valve. All your pressure pass. You don't need a hot rod. You don't need a hot rod. <laughs> 
That's what paid for all my hot rods, setting valves, boring blocks, building engines. So much appreciate my loyal customers. If I can kiss ass a little bit here right now, man. Appreciate you guys coming here and spending your money because it sure helps my racing operation. Here it is, guys. Last valve getting set. And it doesn't need to be set. All the money. We're good. We're good. Tools. All right. So if I wasn't around, you think you could do it? I could. Yeah, most yes. times I write this down for my customers. I'll write down, you know, I'll write the firing order down, and I'll write down the procedure, you know, when the exhaust valve just starts to open, you set your intake. When the, when the intake valve goes all the way down and it's almost back shut, that's when you set your exhaust. If you, if you know that sequence, and you know your firing order, your orientation, and your last setting, and how to identify which is intake or exhaust, you can set valves, man. So there's no, no, no reason to be afraid of setting your valves, or no reason to be afraid of not building a racing motor with a solid cam in it because they definitely make more power, no doubt about it. All right guys, thank you again. Uh, we're done with our valve setting video. Andy's gonna give you the uh, Jensen's Engines Master Tip Sheet for setting your valves. Right, yeah, you comment. And, um, comment, you can comment, ask us anything you want. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. There you go. Thanks for watching, man, hope it helps. All right, go fast.